Imagine you're standing in the middle of Times Square eating a delicious slice of pizza. You could see the flashing billboards and hear a dozen conversations going on all at once. There's the slight smell of garbage in the air, and you could feel the people aggressively bumping into you because, well, you're just standing in the middle of Times Square eating a slice of pizza like a tourist. Not every place is as chaotic as Times Square, but our senses are constantly being bombarded with information wherever we go. The question is, how do we take all this information and create understanding from it? Or better asked, how do we go from sensing to perceiving? How do we know that what we're eating is an ice cream sundae, or that what we're watching is the newest Captain America film? Well, our senses take care of the sensing. That's easy enough. And our brain handles the perceiving. It's our brain who says that cold, sweet stuff you're eating, that's ice cream. So it's pretty straightforward. There's just one little complication. See, our senses take in information like light and sound waves, but our brain can only understand electrical signals. So the question is, how do we bridge that gap? How do we go from sensing to perceiving? Transduction is the answer, and that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Transduction lets our senses communicate with our brains. So what is transduction? Transduction is the process by which physical stimuli are changed into electrical signals the brain can understand. What we're going to do next is explore the transduction process in each of our five senses and then wrap it up with a little compare and contrast. The five classic senses are vision, hearing, touch, smell, and taste. Let's begin with vision. Light enters the eye here and the lens focuses that light onto the retina at the back of the eye. Along the retina, you'll find the eye's receptor cells called rods and cones. When the light reacts with these rods and cones, that's where the process of transduction begins. As we mentioned, rods and cones are the visual receptor cells. Rods are most useful in low light situations and they help with peripheral vision. Cones do most of the work in bright light situations. They help us to see colors and to discriminate between one object and another. These visual receptor cells receive light energy and through a biochemical process that's begun once that light energy reaches the receptor cells, that light energy is turned into electrical signals. Those signals are sent out through the optic nerve and onto the thalamus. Now let's stop here to talk about the thalamus for just a second because it'll come up again. The thalamus is the part of the brain that acts kind of like the traffic cop. He's directing traffic. The thalamus knows where the signals came from and what part of the brain they need to go to to be properly decoded. In this case, the thalamus will send those signals to the brain's visual cortex. It's there that the brain will decide what we're seeing. Now, let's talk about hearing. We especially want to pay attention to the snail-like formation on the right, called the cochlea. That's where our transduction is going to happen. Our outer ears funnel sound waves into our middle ear, causing our eardrums to vibrate. Those vibrations are passed along to the tiny bones of the middle ear where they're also amplified. The bones of the middle ear are attached to the cochlea and as those middle ear bones vibrate, they're vibrating against the cochlea. The cochlea is filled with fluid, so those vibrations for the middle ear cause fluid waves inside the cochlea. Also inside the cochlea are tiny little hair cells that brush up against the membrane. As those fluid waves in the cochlea agitate the hair cells, the tiny hairs brush up against the membranes, causing electrical signals. This is what transduction in hearing looks like on our flowchart. Sound waves from the air are turned into physical vibrations by the middle ear. Those vibrations are passed on to the cochlea in the form of fluid waves that excite hair cells. It's the agitation of those hair cells that creates the electrical signals that are passed on to the thalamus and then to the brain's auditory cortex. Next up is touch. The sensory receptors for our sense of touch are located in our skin. In fact, our skin is the body's largest sensory organ. There are a few different type of receptor cells in our skin, but let's just focus on one to get the idea. Let's take Merkel's disc. 
Merkel's disc is the receptor that's responsible for our sense of fine touch, like the touch we feel with our fingertips. So, going from there, when our fingertips brush up against something, that little bit of pressure is sensed by Merkel's disc and sends an electrical signal down to the nerve and out through our central nervous system and onto the thalamus. Hopefully by now this is starting to look familiar to you. A little bit of pressure on the skin triggers the body's somatic receptor cells. In this case, Merkel's disc. Somatic just means body. Merkel's disc, when it was excited, sent an electrical signal to the thalamus. The thalamus routed that signal onto the brain's somatosensory cortex. Next, let's talk about taste and smell. This is where things start to get a little bit different. The kind of gross picture on the left is a tongue, and if you've spent any amount of time looking at your tongue, you've probably noticed that it's covered in thousands of tiny little bumps. Those tiny bumps are magnified in the picture on the right. The grooves in between the bumps are where we can find our taste buds. The taste buds are a collection of our taste receptor cells. When we put food into our mouth, our saliva starts to break that food down into its chemical components. Those molecules react with our taste receptor cells. Now, this is different. Before, when we were discussing transduction, we were taking a physical stimuli, whether it's light energy or sound waves and vibrations or mechanical pressure on our skin, and changing that into electrical signals. Here, it's the chemical components of our food that are interacting with our taste receptor cells. So this is a transduction from a chemical stimuli into electrical signals. For this reason, taste, and as we'll see, smell, taken together, are called the chemical senses. You'll want to make note of that difference. So these molecules react with our taste receptor cells. Certain taste receptor cells react with certain molecules. Those receptor cells create electrical signals that are sent to the thalamus and then on to the gustatory cortex. When we're talking about smell, we're talking about sensing odors in the air. And odors are really just particles that have been diffused throughout the atmosphere. So when we breathe these molecules in, they enter our nasal cavity. At the back of the nasal cavity, they'll run into our smell receptor cells. These receptor cells, much like the receptor cells for taste, are specialized for certain molecules. So as these molecules interact with the receptor cells, the receptor cells send a signal to the brain. Now, it's a little bit different in smell than from the other senses. The other senses route their electrical signals through the thalamus, who sends it on to the correct part of the brain. But our smell receptor cells create electrical signals and send them directly to the olfactory bulb. The olfactory bulb is the part of the brain that tells us what we're smelling. You can see that process here. Odors are diffused chemicals in the air. Those molecules react with our olfactory receptor cells. And exactly like in taste, these are a chemical stimuli that the receptor cells are reacting to. The receptor cells create an electrical signal and send those directly to the brain. So let's review a little. The problem we are trying to solve is how to take the physical stimuli the sense organs sense and translate them into electrical signals that the brain can understand. How to bridge the gap between sensing and perceiving. We found that transduction is the way to do that. Transduction is the process by which physical stimuli are changed into electrical signals the brain can understand. We found there were actually two different kind of stimuli in the world. Physical energy stimuli like light waves, vibrations, and mechanical pressure and also chemical stimuli. For vision, hearing, and touch, they were taking light waves, vibrations, and physical pressure and changing those into electrical signals the brain could understand. For taste and smell, we were transducing chemical signals into electrical signals that the brain could use. Vision, hearing, touch, and taste all routed their signals through the thalamus and onto the appropriate part of the brain to be decoded. Smell, on the other hand, routed its signals directly to the olfactory bulb, bypassing the thalamus altogether. Finally, please make sure you can answer the following questions. 
If you have any other questions or need clarification, you can always contact me.